Good morning, everybody. We've been doing um, a little short series on who is he coming up to Christmas and uh, the names of Christ. And I don't know, are we going to have that picture up, Luke, or not? Oh, doesn't matter. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> anyway, I wonder, does anyone remember, Luke started the series last week, does anyone remember the names he shared with us? Sorry? Jesus the Savior and Emmanuel. That's right, from Matthew chapter 1. And we're going to look at John chapter 1 this morning. And uh, this is a fantastic passage. I have just enjoyed it so much as I've prepared over the last few weeks and especially this week uh, for this message. And God has just made it alive to me and I trust as I share it with you that you'll catch some of that as well. Um, let's just read the first uh, 18 verses of John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John, he came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out saying, this is the one I spoke about when I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only son who in himself is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. May God bless his word to us this morning. The names of God or the names of Jesus, I love them. I love the way they give us different insights into the character of God. I think of it like a diamond. Now, I don't even have a diamond on me, but our diamonds probably wouldn't show an awful lot. But you know a if you picture a big diamond and there's so many facets or faces on it and when this, the light shines this way, it, it, you know, every little bit catches the light in a diff, slightly different way. And I think the names of Jesus are like that. It's like little insights into the character of Jesus or God. And there are so many names like we had the ones we did last week, and we think of the, some of the prophecies, the wonderful counselor, prince of peace, and we think of the I am's, I'm the bread of life, I'm the life of the world, I'm all the different names, so many names. We could list them off here today and, and we'd have a lot to list. In John's gospel, the emphasis of John's gospel is on Jesus, the son of God, the divine nature of Jesus. John really emphasized. The other gospel writers, um, Matthew talks about Jesus as the Messiah, the King, Mark, the servant, Luke, the son of man, but John is the son of God. And um, 
Look at verse 1. We're just going to go down through this passage, and there's so much in it, but we're, we'll take a, a quick skip through it if we can. But I, do, I don't want to miss anything either because it's a tremendous passage. So right from the start, John introduces us to the main character of his writing. In the beginning was the word. Logos is the Greek word. So here we're calling Jesus the word, the Logos of God. And we get such a description of him here. He was in the beginning. Where else do we find those three words? In the beginning of Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God. And here we have it here. In the beginning, Logos. And uh, very clearly, John uh, shows us that this was the eternal God. Jesus didn't just appear, or God didn't just appear in Genesis 1.1. He was there before that. In fact, he's always been there. He's eternal. He was with God. He is God. He was God. He always will be God. And then we find he was the creator. Through him, all things were made. So right in those early verses of Genesis, when God says, let there be light, Jesus was there. Jesus was part of God. He was, and it's so hard for us to understand that concept. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And that's a really difficult thing for us to understand. And our St. Patrick, didn't he take those three leaves? The shamrock is one leaf, but three very distinct heart-shaped bits joined together. God the Father, God the Son. But Jesus was there right in the beginning of creation. Jesus is the very expression of the nature of God. That's what the word logos means. The reason, the intelligence of God. So everything that's God was in Jesus. That's an amazing truth. The word was the expression and words express how we feel, don't we? If I came in here today and I was really angry, I might talk like this to you. Did you ever talk to your children and you're, oh, you're so embarrassed at the way they're carrying on? Don't just be here. Don't we? It's such an expression. If I'm full of compassion to somebody, how do I speak to them? Oh, if I'm full of love, how do I speak? The words we use are just such an expression of what's in here. And the very heart of God is being expressed through Jesus. The word, logos, not just any old word. Some of the cults translate this first verse, in the beginning was a word. But that's not the way we translate it, and that's not the, the, the idea of Scripture. He is the Word. He is God himself. So Jesus was eternal. He was with God. He was there before creation. He has no beginning. It goes on and on. And that's hard for us to understand, too, because everything we know either started in a factory or started and we planted something in the ground or started in my cake mixer when I put everything in. You know, everything we know of everything created, but God wasn't created and Jesus wasn't created. He was there right from the beginning. So this union with God, this creator, this um, eternal God, amazing pictures here of God. And then I read that in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Life. Do you remember that God, you see, everything was dark. In Genesis 1, everything was just dark and chaos and nothingness. And then when God spoke that powerful word, everything was full of life. There were birds in the air, there were fish in the sea there were animals everywhere and then he made man and what do i read god breathed into him 
And here we have the third person of the, the Trinity to make it even more complicated for our little minds. And life, Adam became a living soul. So we have life through him. And life, light, that light that came. Do you remember it was all dark and what were the first words God said? Let there be light. So here we have just such a, a wonderful picture of God in creation and all of that in Jesus. It's, it's an amazing picture of, of God. Then we read in verse 6, there's this little bit jump put in here about um, John. It says there was a man sent from God whose name was John. I love the one minute we're talking about the greatness of God, the creation, the incarnate, the eternal God. And then there was a man sent from God. He wasn't God. He wasn't the light. He just came to bear witness and testimony to all of the, the stuff in the first few verses to God. And uh, he was an amazing man, John the Baptist. But he wasn't God, he was just a man. And I think that this, you know, this comparison of the greatness of God and then there was a man sent from God. I think that, that it, it, one picture just makes the other one look greater. Bear witness and testify, they're all legal terms, aren't they? And that's what John came to do. That's what we've been asked to do too, friends. Oh, thankfully we don't have to uh, wear the sackcloth and just eat the locusts and honey, who were asked to bear witness and testify to the truth of God and of his word and of himself. So we're sent from God to do the exact same thing, to bear witness. Verse 9, we come back again to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Didn't Jesus say that himself? I am the light of the world. And next week, I know, Luke, you're going to take us to that title. So uh, I'm not going to dwell too much on it, only just to, to again bring out the fact that in the darkness of before Genesis 1, the light came. And in the darkness in our lives, the chaos, the light of the world wants to come and do something in our lives as well. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world didn't recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but they didn't receive him. Isn't that a sad picture too? I think there's some of those verses in scripture that are so, imagine Jesus came from heaven the light of the world to people, to his own people who were prophesying for years about this Messiah coming, but they didn't recognize him when he came and they didn't receive him when he offered himself to them. There are still people like that today, aren't there? Not recognizing the truth and not receiving it. But isn't this an amazing verse in verse 12? Let me read it to you. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. Isn't that an amazing fact this morning, friends? You and I, if we receive him, the people who received him back in that day, and to the, us the same thing, if we receive him, if we recognize him for who he is and receive him, we will become children of God, born into the family of God. And it's all of God. Not, there's no effort, no human effort can do it. It's all of God. It's created the, the rebirth, the reborn. Didn't in another couple of chapters in John, we read about being born again. And it's all of God. 
God. Imagine this morning, friends, if you know Jesus as your Savior, you are part of the family of God. If you take nothing else away from this service this morning, take that truth. You are special to God. You're part of his family. In our close-knit family, fairly close-knit family, we have six people who are adopted. And, you know, I watched some of those. I watched my brother and his wife. They adopted two children. I watched my brother-in-law and his wife, and they adopted two children. And those children came into the family. They took on the family name. And they were entitled to all the privileges and rights of that family. And when we have a Stevenson gathering, do I say, you can all come, but those two, they're, they weren't born naturally into the Stevenson family. They can't come in this family. Do I say that? Not at all. They're part of the family now, just as much as if they'd been born naturally into the family. Friends, this is what Jesus has done for us. He has brought us into the family of God. Wow, we're children of the King. Is that not enough to lift your heart today? As many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. And over when John is writing in, in his letters, he says this lovely verse. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. Rejoice, friends. We're children of God, part of his family this morning. Some didn't recognize him. Some didn't receive him. There's a choice, you see. Always a choice in Scripture. Always we can accept or we can reject. We can recognize or we can not. We can just turn our back. That choice is there for us today. Make sure you make the right choice. Don't you want to belong to the family of God? Don't you want to be one of his children? I'm so glad that I am. Okay, let's fly on because we want to get through a few more bits in here. Verse 14, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. The word, the logos that we're talking about, this amazing God that we're talking about back in the beginning of this chapter, the eternal, the creator, the incarnate, the, this wonderful God took on flesh oh my goodness this this blows our mind doesn't it that that god could come right down into flesh i don't know how it worked i don't know how a virgin teenage girl called mary how god made her pregnant with his son how god actually got inside there i don't know how that worked but i accept it by faith came right down into our world and that's the message of christmas isn't it god became flesh i was re i'm reading a book a story of a um a family in the north who, whose child was abducted and abused and murdered back a number of years ago and it was coming up to the first Christmas after that happened, and the mum was driving home. Now, they'd gone through all the ritual, the, the presents wrapped and under the tree and everything, because they had other boys, and they were determined to make Christmas as normal as they could for them. But all this and the music and the shops and everything, and, and she just said, how can I celebrate Christmas this year? And an audible voice, a word, a logos said to her, why can't you celebrate Christmas? And I know, I know full well when Christmas can be a lonely time because we think of other times when we did stuff and it's family and so on. But the meaning of Christmas, the wonderful thing that we can celebrate at Christmas, even if our hearts are broken emotionally for other reasons, is that God took on flesh 
and came right down into our world. Emmanuel, God with us. And he came to dwell. He made his dwelling. And some translations say, what did they say, Luke? What did you remind me? They came, he came right into our neighborhood. Isn't that the way it says it in the Message Bible? He came right in. Sorry? Moved into the neighborhood. That's it. Took on flesh and moved in. Came right down. Tabernacled. It's, it's a picture back to the tents in the Old Testament when there was the, the tabernacle tent of God was right in the middle of the people. And that's what God has done. He has come right down. Became flesh, became human, experienced all the things that you and I experience. Pain, hunger, tiredness, disappointment, grief, joy, love, thirst, tiredness, all things and lots more. We were doing the letters in, in Revelation there back a few weeks ago. And one of the descriptions of God said he walked among the candlesticks, the lampstands. That's what he did, came right down. He walked around the dusty roads. He walked up the hills. He walked on water. He walked into the homes of friends and enemies. He walked into the situations of death and illness. He walked up the hill of Calvary. He didn't walk into the tomb, but he walked out. And he still walks with us today in whatever situation we're in. He still walks with us, not in a physical way, but no less real. And by his spirit, he still walks right down into our situations, into our homes, into our lives, into everything that's going on. Verse 15, then John puts in another little, little uh, just an interjection about John the Baptist again. It's like he forgot that in the beginning. Now he just sticks it in here and it's in brackets in our Bibles. Just saying who God, that Jesus was before him, even though he came after him and so on again, the eternity and, and so on of God. Then verse 16, out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. This is an amazing picture of the grace of God. He has given us grace. He has given us so much. And then he, in, the, in place of that grace, he piles on more grace. And in place of that, more. And it's always more and more and more. We used to sing an old hymn one time, didn't we? He giveth and giveth and giveth again. And he never stops giving. We think we've received it all. We've known him, we've loved him, we've experienced his forgiveness and his mercy, we've experienced his... And we think, oh... And yet he comes on with more. In place of that grace, there's always more. Isn't that an amazing picture of God? Out of his fullness, everything with God is full. And that we can take from him and, and experience it, and it never gets any less. He's still always full. Out of his fullness, full of grace and truth. Never runs out of his blessing. Then we get that little reference to Moses and the law in there. The law was good, but it could never justify us. But then that last little phrase, no one has ever seen God, but the one and only son who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the father has made him known. Jesus was in the very close, I mean, sure he's part of God, that they're, they're one. So that very closest relation, but he's, relationship, but he's come to make him known. Aren't we so privileged that we live on this side of Jesus coming into the world? They had, they had such an amazing knowledge in the Old Testament, the prophecies and knew Jesus was coming and God was coming. But we're here, we can see it, we can read it, we can experience it. We're so privileged today. No one has seen God. Now John here in an earlier verse said he'd seen his glory. He'd seen him, he'd seen him heal people. He'd seen him um, on that Mount of Transfiguration. He'd seen the glory of Jesus. 
but he'd also seen his humanness. He'd seen everything. And God, through the word, the logos, has revealed himself to us. Logos, God's desire and ability to speak to the human, somebody has said it. It's that powerful word of God, right from the start in creation, the word, logos, let there be light, and there was light. So often we read the word of God came to Abraham, came to Isaiah, came to the word, the logos of God came right in. I often thought about the disciples. Why was it that when Jesus walked along, and John was one of them on the boat, do you remember? And Jesus said, come, follow me. I think it was that powerful word of God spoke in, and they obeyed. Didn't he say to the little girl on her deathbed, arise? And what did she do? Peter's mother-in-law. The word, that powerful word, came to Lazarus, come forth, and out he came. That word is still there for us today. And I just pray as we close this message this morning, I would say, let's open our eyes to see who he is, this amazing God, eternal creator, powerful, amazing God, opened our ears to hear what that word would say into our lives today and open our hearts to respond to it. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for ever showing us in such a wonderful way what you are like. And through Jesus coming into this world, you've revealed to us the heart of God. And Lord, we, we just thank you for the word of God today. And somebody said that words are made up of letters and Jesus said, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the beginning and the end of all the word you need. He's everything. We thank you today. And oh, I pray you'll give us a great big picture of yourself today. But thank you so much. Thank you so much that you came down into this world to reveal all that to us and to take on flesh. Thank you, Lord, and thank you. You're still with us today. We bless you in Jesus' name.